Welcome back. We are coming to you live from Spartanburg, South Carolina. John Murphy, Steve Tasker, and one of Steve's teammates, a familiar face. You might recognize him if you're watching on the MSG feed. Pete Metzelar is longtime Bill's side and joins us here down in South Carolina. Hello, Pete. Good, Good to see are you, man. Good, Good to be city, here. Man. Welcome to the South. Yeah, it's hot Just here, Just a little Pete. sweat going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How That's far is Pete. this from your home? Uh, about 50 minutes. Not too far. 15? 50. 50. Are you yeah. up in Charlotte, right? I'm just south of Charlotte, in South Carolina, the good good side of Charlotte. Yeah. You, you've made your home down here. <laughs> you've made your home down here since uh, pretty much you signed with the, the yeah, Panthers. Yeah, since 95. Yeah, we've been here since 95. You know, I've gone different places around the country coaching and stuff, but uh, we've got a home here. Which group? Indiana, Illinois? Where were Michigan. And, uh, okay, Western so Michigan. Right there, yeah, uh, which yeah, part? For all there the you people, go. All the people from Michigan, they hold your hand I'm, up and say, I'm, I'm right from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Well, yeah, so Michigan and then spent some time in Buffalo a little bit. and Yeah. Knew I didn't want to live in the snow the rest of my life. So. Yeah, and you lapped around I You lapped south. around the NFL for a while, in Indianapolis and stuff. And yeah, coaching coach wise, Indy, right. back to Buffalo, San Diego. Right. Here and there. And, and now you're uh, coaching high school ball. Coaching high school team. Yep. Liking it? Yeah, it's been fun. I've coached, uh, I've been, I helped coach the offensive line the first year, three years ago, and then as offense coordinator the last two years. And we won state championships both years. At wow. A, yeah, so, so, but we graduated eight Division One players last year wow. off our team. So, so it is true. <laughs> so we're kind of rebuilding. It's players, not coaching. <laughs> exactly. It's no, players, just, not coaching. Just don't mess it up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, Pete, yeah. I, you came to Buffalo. I, I, wanted, I don't have your bio in front of me. I know it was uh, mid-'80s, and you came from Seattle, right? Yes. Free agency? Yep. Trade? Eight, no, trade. Who would they trade Byron for? Byron Franklin. Oh, yeah, wide receiver. Wide he was receiver. A he, he's a guy Chuck Knox had drafted. Yeah. And then Knox came out to Seattle. And I played for, I think, I guess two years with Knox. And then he traded. I guess it, was, it ended up being a straight-up trade, Byron Franklin for me. What time of year was that? Uh, it was right before the third preseason game. Okay. Actually, my first game of Buffalo, I get there on like a, I don't even know what, Thursday. And we play a preseason game on Saturday in Rich Stadium. And it's a gully wash and rainstorm. <laughs> and like the water shooting out of the spouts, out of the oh, stadium, yeah. about 10 feet out onto the field. <laughs> it's like, what in the world did I just get into? So, yeah. <laughs> and you, um, well, I mean, you came from Seattle. You knew what rain was all about. Yeah, I right? know, but we played indoors in Seattle. <laughs> oh, that's right. Sorry, the kingdom. <laughs> yeah. were you, did you welcome that trade at that time, Pete? Or were you like, what, what's happening here? I'm moving coast to coast um, to a team that doesn't want to It was, a, well, I like to tell people, you know, Buffalo had just gone 2 and 14. And then Seattle, we'd gone 12 and 4. And this was the previous 86 year, 80, or 85. 82, 83, 84. Okay. We went 12 and 4. Made the playoffs the year before. We had gone to the cha AFC Championship game out in Seattle. So you had Kurt I, Warner on those. Yeah, teams. Kurt Warner yeah. and Dave Craig and yeah. Jim Zorn. I mean, and, yeah, Kurt Jim Warner. Zorn was there. And, yeah, the other Kurt Warner yeah, and Steve running, Largent back, and Kurt Kenny Warner. Easley and on and on and on. So we had a really good team, and you know we're projected because Kurt Warner was coming back. He had been hurt that that year, 84. I blew his knee out, and uh, so we we're projected to have a good chance to you know kind of make a Super Bowl run. And Buffalo was getting ready for. At that point in time, another two and fourteen season. Jim and was not there yet. Kelly. No, it was before that. Yeah. Yep. So, I'd like to say that you know Buffalo was the team. Eighty five was your year when you got, got yeah. there. Yeah. And you had Vince Ferragamo was your Vince Ferragamo. Yep. Yeah. But I always tell people, I said, you know, when I, Buffalo was the team you got threatened with. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. If you don't start playing better, we're going to send you to Buffalo. And I said, and I got sent to Buffalo. I said, and so, it, but but it's still still at the same time. It was like I got a chance to go in there. I could play. Prove, right. hopefully prove I can be a starter, blah, 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 you know. And, you know, eventually it worked out. It did work yeah, out. Yeah, what do you think? That, yeah. I, we, but the 85 here? season, we're there, you know, Bruce is on the Bruce, – yeah. Bruce's rookie Andre. year, Andre's rookie year, uh, Tally's there, uh, Jim Richard's still there. Will you know. Wolford's there. No, he wasn't there yet. He got there in 86? 87, 87, I think, as well. Uh, yeah, uh, he was there yeah. when I got there. Well, you didn't come till the middle of the middle season. Of, uh, middle of 86. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh oh, we're gonna pull. We're gonna go ahead. I'll look it up. <laughs> yeah. so I think he was. So, there but we had a lot of there. good players there. It's just you know we didn't have a quarterback and you know didn't have a lot a lot of stuff going on. You know, it had some had some goofy stuff going on. But you was, had I Hank Bullock. We had coach. Hank Bullock. Is that what yeah. you meant by the goofy yeah. stuff? Well, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. got there the week after Marv got hired on a Monday when they f they fired Hank on Sunday, hired Marv on Monday, and I got there on. Saturday Same morning. week, he, Saturday he claimed morning. you right after. Week, yeah, yeah, the next week, right after, late in yeah. the week, uh, off off waivers, and my first game was like, Mars. Who's this game. guy? 
Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> Who was this guy it's coming worst, in? Was the worst He's supposed damn, to be a special the teams worst guy. day of my life, and I was happy to be in Buffalo. <laughs> when in that era, Pete, we're with Pete Metzlars, by the way, longtime Bills tight end. When in that era did you begin to think, "Huh, oh, we got something going on here"? Did it take Kelly's arrival in '86? Yeah, I think Jim's arrival that kind of that changed the dynamic of the whole thing, and and it made it, um, you know, because the the. Ralph's reputation was that he wasn't going to pay players and he was cheap and right. so on and so forth. And then when he stepped up to sign Jim and make that happen, it was like, ooh, he's getting in on this thing. And we got a chance, and, and it just kind of built from there as, as, you know, they put the team together and Bill drafted the players. They got, they got a chance to draft it. And, you know, and it just you saw the team start building and being put together and stuff. And, and, and I think it was, it was Ralph's commitment to getting Jim Kelly there. Yeah, you could see that, and you hear the stories about when Ralph signed Jim Kelly. There was a line of season ticket holders. They, everybody wanted a season ticket yeah. after that. And I, I remember, too, you, there, a lot of things came together for that team right about that time when Bill Poling became GM, Marv was a head coach, and then Marv assembled his staff in 87. And I think the team might have gotten better a little quicker, but the strike year of 87 really – Yeah, it kind of put a damper on it. Put a on hamstring we were, on, we on the a, progress. I think, well, we, I think our, our – our scab team went 0 for 3 or 0 for 4, however many games they yeah. played. And, you know, there's some great stories that, that took place in that, that, you know, our, the starting center who was going to play on the team for the first game got it. He was from Canada and didn't have a green card. And the Buffalo News wrote an article about him on Saturday morning, so they lost their starting center Saturday morning before the game <laughs> on Sunday. And, yeah. And Will Bill, Gr- you think Bill Polian ever forgot that? <laughs> he was so mad at the guy who wrote that story. Oh ended up getting gosh. Will Grant came back to play in the last game against the yes, Giants. Yes, he did. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> kept holding on. Uh, yeah, oh, gosh, darn. They had, well, Lawrence Taylor, the whole defense was, Lawrence, you just line up on the center and go wherever you want to go and go make the tackle. And Will got it like his fourth or fifth holding call middle of the third quarter and comes off the field. And, and Marv goes, Will, you're killing us. That's your fifth holding call. And he goes, well, coach, actually, it's not that bad because I'm holding him every play. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, true story. That's right. and, yeah, so that, that year, you know, the team kind of took some steps forward, but we, you know, we really didn't I think didn't the good the part about it is we kept practicing up at up at Buffs mm-hmm, UB, UB or whatever UB. on some nasty astroturf field, but we would we kept practicing all through that. Just and you know we'd have secret meetings with Bill Polian down at the Big Tree, and he'd he'd come by and we'd be you know walking the picket line. And he'd be like, "Hey, meet me at a Big Tree," and he kind of update us <laughs> what was going on and stuff. So and <laughs> so it, it kind of was a team <laughs> building kind that. of thing. Yeah, so what were those building. meetings about? Not just kind of update on what the, the labor issues. What, yeah, yeah the labor it was hard to keep updated. It wasn't like it is today where we did cell phones and all of that. It was just it, there weren't any. So it was all by personal phone call or personal conversation. So, you you know, you didn't get. Yeah. And if and the, the no, conference call. No ESPN right. you know, yeah. website. And so all, all of that. Stuff or, yeah, or, all that was. You so know, he'd drive by the on the car. And he'd be in the back seat. He'd roll the window down. He'd be like, "Meet me at the victory." And he'd roll the window back up and keep on going. And, and funny, none of you guys were reluctant to do that. Yeah, no. let's go. <laughs> not, yeah, okay. no, not at all. But I, so that that season ended. Eighty-eight hit, they, and out of the blue, the team went we're twelve and four. Yeah, and 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 it was a different different atmosphere. I think one of the things that doesn't get enough credit uh, for what Marv did in Buffalo and what happened in Buffalo was the staff that he assembled. Uh, when he first got there with Teddy Marchabroda as offensive, particularly on the offensive yeah. side of the ball. Teddy Marchabroda as the offensive coordinator. Uh, Elijah Pitts. Uh, Nick, 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 Nicola- Nick Nicolau. Nick Nicolau uh, was a phenomenal uh, uh, Ted know, coach. Cottrell. Teddy Cottrell. Yeah. Um, Walt, you know, Chuck Lester, all the guys that were there through that. That staff seemed i don't know i you know they seemed to work really well yeah, together i think they did and they got they had a whole history and you know when you get in the coaching business you find out that everybody's it's, it's Connected, intertwined yeah. somehow some way someplace and uh he, he he picked the guys that he wanted to, to be on the staff and and uh the fruit of it was was good bill's uh, former bill's tight end pete metzelars is here lives here he joins us in spartanburg south carolina um, you, you've had a long coaching career, and I wonder what you learned from those Buffalo years watching that coaching staff that Steve talks about that you brought to your career. I mean, not specific plays or, or things like schemes, things like that, but just kind of ways that ways to treat players, way to well, handle players. Yeah, that's what I think. You know, is, is you treat players like like they're like they're adults. Um, you you have high high expectations. Um, and and you you kind of set the bar high, and this is what we expect from you, and and, and hold them to that standard. And you practice 
at a hopefully at, at as close to game tempo as you possibly can. Practice fast. You know, don't be out there just grinding on and on and on. But but get your work in. Get, do the work. Have a purpose to everything you're doing. Move quickly and and, and get off the field. Yeah, if you're if you're out of practice fresh. as a kid, you know, kids will go out to practice. I used to see youth football players do it all the time. They'll go out. They're just trying to get through practice. Yeah. You know, they're trying to. You know, they don't want to, you know, they're trying to make sure they don't get a drink when they're supposed to and then trying to just kind of watch and, you know. And at, this, at the higher levels, obviously, you get more committed players. And at somewhere along the line, you have to, t- you know, they get to the point where, you know what, you, if you, you're liking this. This yeah. is what you're made to. This, you, this is why you stay in shape. This is why it's fun. You get to go out there and you get to run around and you get to play football against these guys that, that are your buddies yeah. and 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 your opponents as well. It's, well, when when, you gotta when have Marv got there, it was it was a dra- dramatic change from the Hank Bulla tenure. Sure, you know Hank would be out there. We're out there for all, close to three hours, and you know there's they used to do a drill with outside linebackers. It was a power drill, and the tight ends we got to be involved in it. All we had to do was step out of the way. So for 15 minutes, all we would do is step out of the way, and then our fullbacks would get a eight-yard running start, and the linebackers just had to take them on, <laughs> one after another after another. And we had like Carl Byram and and oh, I, I already know the linebackers. Some big you know, fullbacks. Yeah, big. You know, they're 260-pound fullbacks, and they're just just getting a free run at the linebackers. And you just got to take them on with your shoulders. And Daryl Talley and all the outside linebackers being in the training room after practice was just huge ice bags on their shoulders, and they'd be just like, oh. I'm we have an, we've instituted everybody who's on that team those teams instituted a dollar fine system for anybody who brought Hank Bull's name up to Fred Smurless because then you have, you're stuck for an hour hearing stories but there, is it really true that they 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 did a nine on seven drill in the parking lot there we did an, on, on asphalt on asphalt we were, now, it was nine por- on seven is a run a, a run <laughs> drill where there's, there's well we were it was raining outside so we'd moved into the gym and they had all these tennis shoes for us to wear. Where's this? Chuck, Chuck Taylor down at Fredonia. Fredonia, okay. Chuck yeah, Taylor's. Chuck Taylor's. Chuck yeah. Taylor's were all the shoes that they had here. Put these Chuck Taylors on so you go practice. They in the rent gym. those to the hot college kids, right? Something the, like I that. I don't know what, where they came. from. They all had like yeah. So we're trying to have our regular practice indoors in the gym at Fredonia, and Hank gets mad and is like, "All right, we're going outside." So we go outside to do inside drill, full full live, you know, basically live, you know, just run game stuff. And we're out on an asphalt parking lot. It's like, what are we doing? <laughs> so Marv came in. We went from a three-hour practice to a two-hour and ten-minute practice with the same number of reps, doing the same things, just doing it with a, a, a more of a purpose to it and an organization to it. You played with the Bills, played in the Super Bowl era, and then left to go to Carolina to come down here to you Carolina. Um, and you, you, you had people around you. Frank Wright came with you. Uh, Pauline was setting up the team. They had to make it easier to leave what were very good a years for you in yeah. Buffalo. Well, Plus, Buffalo didn't want me anymore, so that uh, made it easier to leave. But they say, see ya. Yeah. It's kind of like, what are you okay. Do, right? yeah. So, actually, when the, um, gosh, I'm, I just drew a blank on his name, but uh, the, the equipment guy from the, the Panthers, he just retired. He was up visiting Buffalo, finding out how about stuff the year before in 94. And uh, I saw him in the, uh, in the, training room or the equipment room i said hey next year make sure you spell my name right it's m-e-t-z-e-l you know and then lo and behold i ended up signing down here so it you know worked out and um you know actually we had gone the year before my wife and i t- were homeschooled our, our boys and we'd gone out to arizona to visit phoenix and see you know maybe do we want to live out in phoenix and you know and right. phoenix is even hotter than this so it was like no i don't want to do that yeah. plus it's all brown right so so the next year we we're going to come down to charlotte was next on our list and then we signed down here and it's been good i was talking to today bill rosinski who did the radio play-by-play for the, yeah. those teams you guys were in the nfc championship game in your second year right? yeah i was gone by then oh you were i'm sorry <laughs> sorry i'm sorry and you went I did, where i, I, detroit? I went to detroit you, yeah detroit? for two okay. years yeah but that yeah. team was successful no right they out were the really box. good yeah yes they were we went uh i guess we ended up going seven and nine our first year we had a chance to go eight and eight and ended up losing our last game of the year but we uh I think we started at 0-4, and then we started that was unheard of for an expansion yeah, team. Yeah, for an expansion team yeah. and stuff. So we had, you know, but they they had they had pretty liberal laws or whatever, and the people who are who got exposed yeah. and stuff. And so you're able to build a team. The pretty expansion quickly. draft was very they different changed it. because in yeah. the year in the interim, Bill Poling had left the Buffalo Bills, obviously, and worked for a year in the NFL. In the <laughs> 
laying out the rules for how to build a team and what they could do. So then he gets hired by the expansion Panthers and takes advantage of those rules. And they're Insider in the trading. Yeah. They're in the well, NFC Championship. Jacksonville, so Jacksonville even had, Same they, thing. They, also, they had a really too. good team Same pretty quickly. Thing, you know? yeah. so, so they learned from that. And then when Houston came on board, they're like, you know, you Not guys aren't going to get a good player. You're going to be bad time. for a while. So And you coach for a while. Where'd you start? In Indianapolis, I want to think? Indianapolis, yeah. I coached there for eight years. Uh, got to win a Super Bowl. Yep. That was that was fun. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the best experiences of my life. Take it. I was down on the field. Actually, with about – I was up in the press box. That was a, the only Super Bowl that has rained the whole game. Right. So I was there. I was on the sidelines <laughs> oh, the whole game. Yes. You were up in the press box. So I'm up in the press box. It was dry up there. It was kind of nice. So about <laughs> six minutes to go in the game, I was looking through binoculars. I looked over the score, and it was, you know, whatever. It was 29 to 16 or whatever. And I was like, oh, my gosh, we might win this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, don't even think about it. Don't do you know. So anyways, we, we end up winning. We take us right down on the field. And uh, my son and w two sons and, and Barb are sitting right at the top of the lower bowl. So they come down, jump down on the field. The three of us turn around, and Barb's up there crying that we finally won one of these darn things or whatever. And, <laughs> and the two, three of us turn around, and it's like, yes, we finally <laughs> won one of those things. It, yeah, it was a great really cool. story. It was great. Cool. The coaching continued and brought you to the Buffalo Bills 2012 on Chan Gailey's staff, right? Yep. Yep. What, what do you recall about that season? Uh, just that we were so close and just gave some games away at the yeah. end of the game, you know, whether it was a turnover offensively that allowed the team to go down a score or another, you know, or, or just a you know, breakdown defensively that, you know, we had, we did some really good things that just quite, just couldn't quite get over the, over the hump and, uh, you know, and they end up letting all of us go after, after that you season. You had so, Scott Chandler as your primary Scott Chandler, Pretty good uh, player. Lee, Lee Smith. Lee Smith who's yep, with the Bills Lee again. Smith going. And so, you know, we had some good players and it's just, you know, like I said, we just yeah. make mistakes a little bit, you know, just not quite good enough. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as you know, you wish you, there's times where we put, um, oh gosh, uh, uh, who's our quarterback? Come on, help me Fitz? out. Yeah, Fitz. You know, where you put Fitz in situations where he kind of had to win the game and it's better if he's just kind of protecting the lead and, right. you know, and, right. and got a defense that doesn't force him to have to go win games. Um, and our defense wasn't quite good enough and you know, we signed Mario Williams, and everybody expected him to come in and just crush people and stuff, and, and he never did in Houston because we played against him twice a year every year in Indianapolis, and it's like, well, he's the same guy as he was in Houston. Just because you paid him more doesn't mean he's going to be Did you better, verbalize that? Doesn't one? mean he's going to be a better player. Did you say that? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Good. It's like he's playing like he's played in Houston. Yeah. So, you know, everybody's yeah. all upset. They're like, gosh, well, how come he's – it's like, well, that's, that's, that's what who he is. is. Yeah. yeah. So now you, you're – Coaching high school football, do you what do you keep track of, if anything, in the NFL? Do you watch it? Do you a little bit? I watch that? it and stuff. I, I watch, you know, I'm, I'm still a fan of the game and stuff, mm -hmm. and kind of watch the trends and stuff. And you know, I'll watch it now and I'll see play. Oh, hey, we can do that, and that's you know, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I try to steal stuff. You yeah, know, sure. that's all football is. is everybody oh, stealing yeah. stuff from everybody else. So <laughs> I don't know who has the original thought, but it's not very many people. Right. Um, it's probably some high school coach somewhere, and some NFL guy goes, "Oh man, yeah, that's or, a good idea." Or he yeah. had the original thought in 1957. <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. And he's, he's long gone. Yeah. So, so I, I still watch it. Still enjoy watching it. I, you know, I enjoy watching expertise of. And the, the, the examples and, and, and the, the, the stuff, how, how they play the game, yeah. you know, at, at the professional level. It's just, it's, it's phenomenal, the, the, the athletes that are out there, the precision that they have to, you know, that it takes to play the game. And, and you, you know, to see people like Tom Brady who can just do it year after year after year with the system that he's in and the, 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 the stuff that they allow him to do. Um, it's it's pretty amazing. Pete, you got back into the professional level of coaching this past winter with the Alliance <laughs> of American Football, no. Atlanta yeah. Legends, right? Were they the Legends? What happened? We were Steve and I were last. <laughs> no, I remember really last know. fall? Oh my god! We're saying this we thing's going to so take off. I, I can't gonna, wait. I we're it like, it I'm going to watch every Sunday. I'm going to watch that game of the we week. We were so high on your league. Yeah, I thought it was going to be oh. great. I thought I really did. I thought you know, there's such a market there. Um, you know, some of the things they did. You know, obviously, you know, putting a team in Atlanta. Atlanta's never been a great sports town. Really? To begin with, you know, if you're winning, they're, they're okay with you. But, you know, it's like I think it would have been better suited to put it in, you know, kind of smaller towns yeah. that mm -hmm. this is the big deal and people get excited about like it. Charleston or something. Yeah, something like that or Raleigh or, you know, something. You know, they got all the college teams in Raleigh. But right. even that, um, you know, some different places like that. Because, they had de you know, San Antonio had great crowds. Yep. Um, and I think Memphis had some decent crowds. Orlando was okay. Birmingham, I guess Birmingham had decent crowds, but they had miserable weather almost every game or whatever. So, but like San Diego didn't get very many. But 
Nobody came to the Chargers games either right. in San Diego. Right. So, you know, why would you expect people to all of a sudden show up? The when football they was pretty good, there? wasn't it? No, I thought the football was very good. Um, it just wasn't – didn't have the financial backing that it needed um, to get through the first couple of years. Um, yeah, you got to be ready so to take a loss with that for a couple of years. That's what you think, and that's kind of what they had said they were going to do. And they, you know, suppose they had the backing for it, and that dried up before the season even began. I mean, Man. <laughs> Shocked because we like, thought with Polians involved, this is going to fly. That's right. Yeah. yeah, and I think they had they had some things they were going to do extremely well. I, I one of the things I noticed about them, the AAF was on. It was on every week. At least one game you could find it and it, yeah. you could go get it. But it, I never heard about it bet- in the interim. I never no, heard about it. There's no advertising talk. And well, the NFL. I mean, you got yeah. ESPN. You had a whole network dedicated to well, that's, programming. ESPN did not ever mention the Alliance League once. They didn't give any highlights, no coverage, no you know, and and they're kind of, you know, the the, the worldwide big, leader, the big big horse or whatever in the whole right. thing, and and uh, you know, you would you would think, but I guess you know they they weren't either you weren't giving enough kickbacks or they weren't covering it, so they're not gonna they're not gonna put it on or not even talk about it, and so I think that was a big factor in, in hurting it. That the, you know, you know, why not do a two or three minute segment and put sure. some highlights on and here this guy made this catch or right. that, you know, but they didn't do it at all. Nothing. Right. Nothing. So th- I, I think they're tied in with the XFL, which is going to start again this next break. Yep. So maybe they'll get some coverage and yeah. get enough exposure that they can build a market and keep the thing going. I think there's a market for spring ball. I think there's a market for the players. It was great for the players to have an sure. opportunity. And I think we had 60 some guys or whatever signed from the, Alliance League into the NFL, at least right. in training camps. I don't know, you know, who's going to come out of it if, so any, like if an, anybody it's does. It's like a but, full roster. Yeah. You know, of, but, of players. Also. You know, there's there's people who came out of the, back in the day, the, the you know, World League or the, you know, the yeah. European League. USFL, and, you know, Kurt Warner and NFL you know, Europe. all sorts yeah, of guys. All of yeah, all yeah. those guys. There's tons of players who came out of that. And it, so it's, it, there's a, there's a, there's a need for it. And a market for it, I believe. So it's just finding the right people to be able to get it done. Pete Metzelar's former Bills tight end. Is, you lived down here 25 years in the Carolinas now, huh? That's unbelievable. I can't. Yeah, sure. Well, you go. You're not I going. Wouldn't think, you, I wouldn't think. I wouldn't think. the game Friday. Will you go to the? Actually, we got a scrimmage Friday. Oh, high school go for your high We got a scrimmage. Yeah. So I will not be able to make it. And to you're the busy game. with how many grandchildren? Five. All of them in this area. Yeah, they're all in this That's area. That's good. Yeah. You're lucky. Yeah. 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 We have. Yeah, good for you. We get them out on the lake and go tubing and. Excellent. Take them golfing and you're living the life. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. it's great to catch up with you, Pete. Great, great seeing great you, Pete. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank you, you very much. much man. Thanks, man. Tell Barbara said, "Hey, I will do that." Thanks. Tell her, tell her, same man, to she Sarah. Show up. What's the deal? Yeah, she want to see me? Uh, she's actually on call right now, delivering babies. So, oh, all right, all so, right. She's a midwife. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's a midwife. Yeah, yeah. yeah, all right. She's in there. Tell her we said hey. Catch catcher. Catcher's man. Pete Metzelars. Good to catch up with him. Steve and I coming back with more One Bills Live presented by Kalata Health from Spartanburg, South Carolina. This is Buffalo Bills Radio.